With me today, I have a 2020 Toyota Highlander Platinum, and this is the hybrid edition. This one gets up to 35 miles per gallon for a mid-sized SUV, which is phenomenal. Toyota flew me out to Utah. I'm surrounded by mountains and snow. So in this review video, I'm gonna show you how this Highlander is on the road and also how it behaves with heavy snow. So if you're in the market for a mid-size SUV that gets phenomenal fuel economy numbers, then this is a video you don't wanna miss. Stay tuned. The new Highlander's design language is definitely a big departure from the last generation. The front end looks like a cross between a chiseled RAV4 and a round Subaru. The large black grille in the middle is surrounded by a lot of chrome. The platinum trim also gets a painted silver lower bumper that you see here. The LED headlights are adaptive and the fog lights are also LED and available on the higher trims. Now because this is a hybrid, the Toyota emblem has a blue background. Now moving on to the side, you can see the Highlander has a sportier stance with a sloping roof and a higher belt line. There are a lot of curves along with the integrated roof rack on top and a lower chrome window trim. There's also a large hybrid badge right underneath the mirror to let you know this is a hybrid. And the wheels that you see here are special 20 inch wheels reserved for the hybrid platinum only. The back of the Highlander looks more compact than the last generation due to the sloping roof. The large LED taillights are smoked and has a really cool look. The lower bumper trim is also painted silver because this is the platinum trim. Of course, there's one more hybrid badge for good measure. Due to the increased length and wheelbase, the 2020 Highlander gains more cargo room. Underneath, there is some storage space along with the place to hide your privacy cover. There is also a 12V outlet on the left side. Now, folding down the seats are easy. Simply pull on the tab and let the seats drop. The headrest will automatically fold, which is really nice. Inside this Platinum Hybrid, you get standard captain chairs, and this one is configured with a beautiful caramel leather interior that you can only get on the Platinum trim. Second row passengers get a pair of USB ports, a household outlet, along with climate controls and heated seats. Unfortunately though, the cup holders are mounted on the floor in between the captain chairs, which makes it hard for kids or adults to move in between the chairs. I didn't hop into the third row of this hybrid, but I did test out the third row previously in a non-hybrid 2020 Highlander, which is identical in space. It is not a friendly place for adults and should only be reserved for kids or for emergencies. Up front, this caramel leather carries into the dash, center console, and door panels, and this two-tone look is just outstanding. The steering wheel is modernized and has the right thickness. The buttons on the right side is for adaptive cruise control, lane assist, and for controlling the modes and scrolling for the radio. Buttons on the left is for the phone and voice control, volume, and scrolling inside the gauge cluster. Now, that large info screen in the gauge cluster can show you many things, such as fuel economy, driver support functions, the radio, torque monitor, and more. Now, of course, what's unique with this hybrid is the tachometer has been replaced with a gauge that lets you know if your Highlander is charging or in eco mode or in power mode. Charging is utilizing regenerative braking whenever you take your foot off the gas. More on this during the drive. Left of the steering wheel, you have auto high beam, bird's eye view system, which is only available in the Platinum, power tailgate, heated steering wheel, heated wipers, and control for the household outlet. There's also two memory seat settings and auto up down for all windows. Now, the centerpiece to this new Highlander has to be this 12.3 inch screen for the infotainment. The screen is big, bright, high resolution and very responsive. Also Apple CarPlay, Android Auto along with Wi-Fi are now standard. This is a huge improvement over last year's infotainment screen. Underneath that you have some volume and scroll knobs along with climate controls. There are large buttons for temperature control, fan speed, recirculation, all that good stuff and three levels of ventilated and heated seats. You also have some shelf space in case you want to just throw some things in there. By the way, the engine start button is blue because this is a hybrid. 
Underneath, you have three USB ports and a 12V outlet, a standard shifter, and three different drive modes, including Sport, Normal, and Eco. Now, the terrain select from the Gas Power Highlander has been removed, and I'll talk about the special all-wheel drive setup in a little bit. The Snow Mode also has been replaced with the EV Mode button, which allows electric-only driving at low speeds for short distances. There's also a new Trail Mode, which helps get the Highlander out of sticky situations by breaking the spinning wheel and sending torque to the grounded wheel. Underneath the center armrest, you have a wireless charging tray, which could be folded up for some space underneath. On top, you have home link buttons, a SOS button, and controls for the large panoramic sunroof that you see here that's only available on the Platinum trim. As for the new engine setup in this 2020 Highlander Hybrid, you now have a gas-powered four-cylinder engine up front pushing 186 horsepower and 175 pound-feet of torque. And you have electric motor in the rear. And in combination, this brand new hybrid gets 243 horsepower in total. Now the transmission is a ECVT and not the 8-speed used in the V6. Towing drops down to 3,500 pounds versus 5,000 pounds with the V6. All right, so the first thing is I want to test out the all-wheel drive capability of this hybrid Highlander, which has a different all-wheel drive system. Normally, on a normal Highlander, you have torque vectoring mechanically linked all-wheel drive system. You have one engine that's powering the front and rear wheels, and it can distribute the power front and back and side to side. This one, because it's a hybrid, it works differently. Uh, it has the gas motor up front that's powering the front wheels and an electric motor that's powering the rear wheels and they work in conjunction. So the first thing is to check out how this all-wheel drive system is on this snowy and icy course. And then I'll take it out on the road. All right, I'm off. So first of all, take a look at the mountains in the background. It is just amazing, amazing. I never knew uh, Utah has such nice mountains and it's such a, such a good place uh, for skiing and any winter sports. All right, so here's a, here's a hill. Let's see how this Highlander does. Going up about 20 miles per hour. No problem. I got a photographer at the bottom there. Then let's see, whoop, back slips out a little bit around the corners. Got to maintain some speed here. Don't want to, don't want to get stuck or ruin this nice course. Uh, yeah, right now. Yeah, around the corners, you could feel the tail slip out a little bit, but the all-wheel drive system and the traction control is making sure that I'm not slipping out all the way. And you know what? Pretty good. Pretty good so far. Uh, here we go. Uh. <laughs> this is pretty fun. So I took that course around 20 miles per hour. So not, not the quickest, but you know what? When you're in a hairy situation, you're taking ice roads, snow roads, most likely you're not gonna be going much faster than that. All right, next, I'm gonna take this Highlander out on the road and see how it is. So when I tested out a Highlander Limited, I was already impressed by a lot of things. For example, you have a good seating driving position, see well over the hood, well out the sides because the door panels are actually quite low, so the windows are big, even rear visibility is good, so that hasn't changed. Uh, but in terms of overall quietness, you know, wind noise, none of that, nothing coming through the windows. Also, cars passing by, really don't hear it. I'll say the engine is a little bit loud, so under acceleration, this 
not even heavy acceleration, just normal acceleration. It is a little bit loud, so that's one of the things you do here. So in terms of overall noise level quietness, um, it is quiet, but I do hear the tires a little bit more and I feel like the engine is a little bit louder. So let's do zero to 60. Okay, there we go. Now I'm slowing down. <laughs> uh, that took quite a bit longer than the V6 version. And it got up to 30 pretty quick. Then from 30 to 60, that's where it took a bit longer. But for most of you guys that are driving around town, this is more than adequate. But if you're looking for some real oomph, right? Some real power behind acceleration, you're not going to get it in this. Now something else that you notice about this hybrid uh, drivetrain is the regenerative braking. So if you let off the gas, you know the gauge that shows you if you're charging eco power, it drops the charging and you can feel brakes working. Uh, it's trying to uh, get some power back. So you do feel that and it just makes the Highlander come to a stop faster. But when you're going downhill, it's actually really nice because you really don't have to put your foot on the brake. You could just let it go and it's actually real recharging and slowing the car down which is nice the midsize suv segment is very very competitive we know that uh, especially with newcomers um, like the telluride and the palisade right which are phenomenal suvs but the highlander is definitely up there toyota has brand recognition and loyalty like no other and for good reason and the highlander continues to be one of the best selling suvs and i think this is going to do really really well a lot of people are looking for mid-size suv with phenomenal fuel economy numbers and a really good cabin spacious and elegant cabin this fits the bill the steering is also very precise um, it has a good good heft to it, a little vague, but it is very precise. There's like almost no play in the steering wheel, so a lot of you guys will appreciate that. The brakes, in terms of regenerative braking, I already talked about when you let your foot off the gas, but in terms of just coming to a stop, you do feel a little more. You kind of feel a, a little vibration in the brake pedal. Um, it still stops about the same, like the travel is still about the same, but you feel a little bit of vibration in the brake pedal because of the regenerative braking. I'm really enjoying this ride. It would be a little bit better if it had a little bit more grunt, a little bit better acceleration. But then again, this is for maximum fuel efficiency, right? So Toyota was not so concerned about giving more power to this. They were more concerned about getting the most miles per gallon it can get. And this beats the miles per gallon uh, for both city and highway and combined from the last model tremendously. Uh, it, it, the numbers went up quite a bit. So in terms of the safety system, you get the latest Toyota Safety Sense 2.0. You get everything in here. Pre-collision uh, warning and emergency braking. You also get lane assist and lane warning to keep you within the lane. Uh, blind spot monitoring, uh, rear cross traffic alert, auto high beam. Um, the ability for the system to read the speed limit sign, right? Uh, it has everything, so you're covered there. Look at that view, man. Look at that view. Now, I don't know if, uh, if this all-wheel drive system could get the Highlander up there. That will be a real test. Next, let's look at the good and bad to this brand new Highlander Hybrid. Starting with the good. You have a modern exterior refresh for this brand new model. Basically, there's no hybrid competition in the midsize segment within this price range and with this kind of fuel efficiency. Plan trim offers an exquisite interior. There's tons of features and safety features inside. You have good visibility, good driving position, and a good amount of space. Lastly, you have a great infotainment system and a great info screen in the gauge cluster. As for the bad, there's a few things. Some features are reserved only for the top platinum trim. Acceleration with the hybrid is just so-so and the engine is loud. Max towing decreases substantially. The tires are a bit louder, 
the regenerative breaking takes getting used to, and finally the third row room is lacking. The 2020 Toyota Highlander Hybrid is in a class of its own. Versus the gas power Highlanders, the cabin, space, quality, features stays the same, but fuel efficiency goes up tremendously. However, acceleration, towing, and some quietness is sacrificed. I'm giving the brand new Highlander Hybrid a score of 100. To see where it ranks among its peers, check out driversonlyrankings.com. Thanks for watching guys, make sure you hit the like and subscribe to the channel and check out these other videos.